Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars Colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1 and in this episode we're going to bring back down the Shinkansen space plane first getting into low earth orbit and then hopefully doing re-entry properly we'll see uh, that's all down to a program just like my shuttle missions and well we're just gonna get to it and then after that maybe we'll uh, sort of refit the Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 in preparation for the next window. Speaking of which, we should probably get an alarm for that. Um, let's not do it this way. Let's do it with Transfer Window Planner. So Earth to Mars. We've got the Mars to Earth that trans uh, Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 will need, but there's also this matter. So um, we'll just plot like that. And add that alarm. So basically right after the Mars to Earth transfer window, before Mars transfer vehicle 2 actually gets back, we're going to have to send something over to Mars. That will probably be a new crew with a new vehicle. Uh, probably not this though. We'll have to talk about that. But anyway, let us undock. Okay. And controlling from here, back away. There's always something, it's always difficult to do it, but it's always nice to dock a shuttle light craft to a station. Seems far more substantial than a pod. So the key here is we need to figure out what kind of periapsis we need. We would really, really, really like for the periapsis to bring us immediately down to an orbit that is not in the radiation belts, right? So we would like to be inside that loop on the first pass and then uh, readjust as necessary. That's not the easiest thing to do. I almost want to go to periapsis and bring the apoapsis down because... No, actually... Yeah, uh, we'll do a burn to bring the apoapsis down, and then that'll give us more room. You see there's actually more space between the surface and the radiation belt on this side than on this side. So maybe we'll take advantage of that. So we'll bring it down at periapsis. Okay, so how much will it take to bring our orbit down? I mean, basically what we've got. I feel like that's a little bit too much. So we'll do the apoapsis one instead. So I'm gonna go with 72 kilometers, I think. We'll see if that does the job or not. And work from there. Okay, we actually need to switch the engines that are active. Which will yield us a little bit more delta V because these are obviously more efficient. All right, settling the fuel down. And ignition. Okay, and we'll finish it up with the RCS, but I am going to Alt F5. I'm going to quick save this, a rare case of that. Because if it turns out not to be the right periapsis, I want to try again. So we're going to straight up just test this at this point. Experimental mode. I mean, I could keep launching it over and over again, but I think you would find that tedious eventually. I've tested it before, but not in this version, I don't think. Okay, let's get set up. Tracking solar panel. Closing bay. We're basically going to go flat-bellied through the atmosphere. As if we were a pod. We really don't need to generate any lift or anything. So I'm just going to set it to 80 degrees and see if that's okay. And that's pitch above the prograde vector, not... Uh, not the actual pitch on the nav ball. Oh, we do need to retract these. Um, 
Is it just me or do we somehow... We've lost our body flaps somehow? Oh no, they're there. Are they? They're... They're, they're there where? <laughs> they somehow got clipped in instead of... They're supposed to be out here covering... Covering the engines. Hmm. That's wrong. I mean, obviously, uh, they're not supposed to be clipped into the body like this. But we'll see what happens. We did quick save. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. We're not going very deep into the atmosphere. Though, probably deep enough. Uh, it's pitching itself down. It doesn't seem to be able to hold that orientation. Okay, well, we'll take a note of that, so... Um, let's not make it force itself. Better to be in a stable position than anything too forced. And that's the actual body that's overheating right now. We are going up again already. So I don't anticipate that the overheating is gonna cause any problems. But... Also not sure that we're gonna get low enough. So we can go lower. I mean, the body was overheating a bit, but we could aim for a little bit lower and it seems like we need to. Okay, so we ended up at uh, 12,922 kilometers. Just too high, obviously. Our 334 meters per second wouldn't be good enough to deal with that. All right, so I'm going to reload that uh, save file. Minor unfortunate thing is that when you reload a quick save, the clouds don't render properly. I guess there's a way to rebuild that, but anyway, let's aim for 70 kilometers this time. We'll do it incrementally. Again, the heat resistance on this is the same as the space shuttle, but the space shuttle on re-entering um, dipped itself to a periapsis of below zero, generally. My space shuttle, when I do the re-entries with the CSS shuttle or the DEC-Q shuttle in KSP, I normally set the periapsis to like 40 or less. So this is higher up, but the goal is just to aero break a little bit into low Earth orbit, so we're not killing all the velocity. So even though we're coming in with a whole lot more initial velocity, we're not trying to get rid of, you know, all of our velocity, so... It's not quite as much heating. And we do get overheating indication. Well, we could stand to go a little bit lower. Really, it doesn't seem like uh, that made a huge difference on our resulting altitude. Last time we hit 12,922 on exiting the atmosphere. We'll see how we do here. But then again, last time we also started out at an 80 degree pitch and then pitched down. So maybe that had an effect there. Okay, yeah, uh, we actually ended up higher. And I do think it is because of the variable pitch last time as opposed to the constant one this time. So we'll try a little bit lower. We'll try 68 kilometers and see what happens. So, Alt F9. Well, it seems like we can weather more than that, and we'll need to. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try just 60 kilometers next, because we're not getting too much closer. If we explode at 60 kilometers, well, that's why I quick saved. So, yep, this is not good enough. Okay, here we go again. Okay, we've got overheating again, and this time we've got the indicator on the body itself, as opposed to just over to the left there. So it's real serious. Well, it's better, but it's, it doesn't seem like it's good enough either. 7,692 kilometers. Okay, well, I'll uh, knock it down to 58 kilometers and we'll see. Alright, monitoring the heating again. 
Of course, the effect of this pitch is to bring up our periapsis, but that's... Oh, it's gonna explode. And all the other bits. Okay, so 58 kilometers is a no-go. We'll have to take 60 kilometers. I'll do that again, and then we'll bring it down to that level and see what we can do after that. But, um, looks like 60 kilometers is the limit. Okay, so we'll just take what we get on this pass at 60 kilometers, and then we'll probably try and pass it through the atmosphere again because our remaining delta V isn't enough to get into a nice tight orbit. So we'll have to do some testing as to what the correct periapsis for the second pass is going to be. Well, it looks like we'll be in the inner belt here. And unfortunately, at our apoapsis when going through that, it will only be um, about an hour or so, but still. I guess uh, actually for the top part of this, it's not technically in it. It's only when it swings down that it's in it, and it swings out of it on the bottom end here. So maybe less than an hour, maybe, hopefully. Actually, we'll take a look exactly how long it's going to be. Unfortunately, we don't have crew on board to get an actual radiation dose. Well, depending on how you look at it. So let's take a look. We're going up. This is still outside of that. Though, I guess we don't have the South Atlantic anomaly on this. Really? We're just on internal power, no solar panel here. I think we'll try 80 kilometers to see what it does, or maybe maybe it's going to be lower. Alright, I'll Alt F5 here again, because we're going to have another periapsis to determine. So then taking a look at the clock, we're at... Uh, We're basically going to be entering soon, it looks like, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. We'll call it 9.30 on the entry into the belt. And May 10.05 exit. So 25 minutes or so only. Okay, we are entering the atmosphere again. This time for a mild pass, though. Okay, well, we're at periapsis here. And basically, we've cut off about 20 minutes of orbital period. We'll see how it does. Still very much inside that band. Okay, yeah, this pass is insufficient. Still gets us into that band. And we don't need to stay this high, so I'm gonna try it again, except somewhat lower. I think we'll go for 75 kilometers and see. Okay, we are going back up again. I think this pass will be better. Okay, actually, not quite. What? Well, 60 kilometers will probably be pushing it, right? I mean, is it likely to be 60 kilometers for both passes? Hmm. Okay. So we will try 60 kilometers this time. It might be too low. It might just bring us down to uh, descent orbit, but it might be all right. We'll see. So in that case, it would be 60 kilometers both times, which is at least easy to remember. Since this time we're slower in our approach, we're not heating up as much as we did on the first pass at the same periapsis. Of course, the lift has brought that periapsis up from 60 kilometers to 71 kilometers, as expected. And we are going up. Okay, so 60 kilometers leaves us at 1,415 kilometers on the apoapsis. So, actually, we need something even lower than that. Well, alright. Again, we didn't really heat up that much on this pass because we were coming in slower. So, uh, let's try something lower. Okay, well, this is going to be 56 kilometers. Okay, we're going back up on this 56 kilometer pass. And our goal is to stay in orbit. 
course. But also as tight an orbit as we possibly can. Last time the apoapsis was 1,415 kilometers. This time it's gonna look lower than that. But how much lower? And the problem is our periapsis is also going down. That's not great. So basically I'm gonna have to take 1,000 kilometers I think. So actually probably needs to be lower than 56 kilometers but I'm gonna stop that business here and we're going to get into a stable orbit. And then wait for a correct time to get back to Cape Canaveral. We don't have a whole lot of fuel left to do what we need to do. So we'll see how that works out. Well, that's close enough to a standard orbit on one side. That's a one and a half hour orbit. Uh, if we were to try to actually get that standard orbit, how much would it cost? Well, clearly too much. Yep. Well, just about all we've got, <laughs> so we wouldn't be able to deorbit. Let's uh, try and line up with Cape Canaveral first. And let me get the solar panel out. And then I'll try to use the re-entry script. I have the re-entry script around here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll go with what we've got and see what happens. 191 meters per second left. We are in a lopsided orbit. However, our periapsis seems to be at the location where we would normally do a retro burn. Oh, but that probably means that we won't have enough delta V to bring it into the atmosphere. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, well... Having reviewed the situation and temporarily gotten the panel and bay open again, I've decided that we will not use KOS, in fact, and instead just bring it down using Smart ASS to see how it handles on the way down. Unfortunately, given our periapsis location, we will be coming down in the dark and probably in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I can't really see. So, yeah, not the best situation. Uh, we'll... Next time we'll need to have a little bit more delta V than we seem to have here right now. We could potentially pack like a little booster pack of fuel in the bay. There is space for more fuel, at least on this side. But possibly I could have done some of the other stuff a little bit more efficiently too. Everything with this system is very tight after all. It's easier to get to the moon than the orbit we were aiming for too because uh, it was geosynchronous orbit and everything. And coming back down costs more than coming back from the moon. Okay, so I guess around here we will carefully deorbit. I don't know how much Delta V Smart ASS is going to need with the RCS in order to handle it on the way down. Okay, deorbiting. I'm a little bit worried about how those rear control surfaces somehow got tucked in, though. We'll just go with 40 kilometers, which as I mentioned with the shuttle would be a standard periapsis. At least in Kerbal Space Program, not in real life, but... So we have 112 meters per second left here. Okay, we are now at 88 kilometers. I'm a little bit worried about the pitch it's using. And again, because the rear control surfaces are not where I thought I had put them, and instead clipped into the body, I'm wondering whether that like shifted the center of lift in a way that I didn't want. We'll see. I mean, it is very touchy. But so far it's holding it, uh, though using some RCS, obviously. Okay, well, it can't hold the pitch down right now, apparently. 
It's maxed out the pitch. It's trying. Uh, it's sort of wobbly. Maybe if I let it hold a higher pitch. Well, lots of wobbling. At least it hasn't completely flipped out. Okay, it seems to have sort of stabilized at 50, but it's using pitch a lot still. I think that's because we've gone up. Once we go back down, it'll start having problems again, I think. Oh, well, that pitch is getting really high now. <laughs> okay. Well, it certainly helps in slowing down, but it really needs to be able to push the nose down so that it doesn't stall out. If it can't eventually push the nose down, it's going to just stall. I think uh, our center of lift is too far forward because of the misplaced control surfaces back here. It is very delicate, so... And there's no mass that I can move forward. I could probably dump the helium here, because those propellant tanks are empty now. I suppose. But the helium, honestly, is not very heavy. Oh no, it's flipping over. Oh, actually, that. Let's just point up prograde. Point up prograde. So pretty high, very much stalled out. Trying to get this back on an even keel. Eventually, as we get into thicker air, it is possible. I'm gonna assume that we're over water since the true altitude and the altitude up there are about the same. But since I can't see anything, I'll put the landing gear down eventually anyway. Okay, landing gear is down. Okay, about to hit the surface. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, hmm, that is not how that's supposed to go. This is actually the crew cabin. That's the Ford RCS tanks. Okay, well, yeah, that's not gonna turn out very good. Splashdown's clearly not safe with this, with this thing, unlike the space shuttle. Well, we'll have to fix things. Yep. Definitely not crew safe yet. I mean, as long... I mean, we could just leave the crew up or take them back down some other way. Uh, this could still be used as a transfer vehicle from LEO to high, uh, high orbit. But anyway, let's move on to other things. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is add a reactor and an additional methane oxygen tank to Mars Transfer Vehicle 1, so it'll be a little bit more like Mars Transfer Vehicle 2, though I'm contemplating other changes, we'll see about that. But uh, first things first, let's just get this part done. Uh, this is Jita Super Heavy. We'll probably be using most of the fuel from the methane, methane oxygen tank that we're delivering in order to get it up there, and then we'll refuel it later. So this will basically be delivering the dry tank plus the reactor, plus a bunch of reaction wheels, which I wanted. So, uh, for some reason we have no SAS units. I'm not sure why. I'll control this manually and ignition. And launch. Launch. Okay. So, obviously, smart ASS will just take the place of SAS in this case. Okay, getting ready for core ignition. Ignition. And 
and boost reset. Okay, all is well. Okay, fairing separation. And so what we have here is... Docking port, obviously. Three of these reaction wheels. And we've got upgraded thrusters now. Uh, I didn't change the ISP, it's just increased thrust doubled because of increased chamber pressure in the thrusters to 40 PSI, which is certainly manageable. Uh, the reason it was limited before was because of use on the lander stage, and those still have the old rating. Uh, so we have the reactor here, and the uh, uh, thermal power generator there, of course radiators, and more thrusters, docking ports, and a docking port at the end, and this tank which is currently full but won't stay that way. Oh, we don't have separatrons on the first stage. That's strange. Okay, separation and ignition. And we have to uh, deploy extension, switch engine mode to the higher specific impulse. And also enable crossfeed because that'll suck fuel from this eventually. So we have our full Delta V, which is substantial, of course, because it's mostly two huge fuel tanks. So. Alright, that's good enough. We are in orbit. I think I'll extend these radiators. Uh, let's see how well it can turn with just the reaction wheels. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's 71 tons, but that's less than half what we expect a Mars transit vehicle to be. It's not a bad turn rate, to be honest. I think we can deal with it, and it'll save us some RCS usage like that. Okay, you don't need to continue like that. All right, let's plot for our intercept. Okay, we'll probably have a mid-course adjustment to that, but that's good enough for now. Okay, well we managed to turn without the RCS on, but now we need to settle the fuel down, so... That's a quicker process than before. So, ignition. Okay, actually no mid-course adjustment required at all. We've got a very nice encounter there. So, get rid of that, and off we... Well, the, the game doesn't agree. The game sees it as a 1,289 kilometer gap, but MechJeb thinks it's 2.4 kilometers, so we'll see. Well, we're already closer than what the game thought, so... Oh well. Well, we're substantially lighter now. Should mean that the RCS will be sufficient for making the maneuvers to get in there. Okay, we are now in render range of Mars Transfer Vehicle 1. Things have slowed down somewhat, of course. And sure enough, we're on the wrong side of it. <laughs> um, alright. Okay, we can probably park it here for now, while the back end of the trans vehicle is removed. I don't know if we want another Xenon tank. Okay, so let's make sure that there's some fuel over on this side. Um, really, the main thrusters are over here on this. We should unlock that stuff. Okay, and let's get a little bit more fuel in there. At least oxidizer, actually. Let's just top it off. So, back end. We are in control. Good. <laughs> I'll temporarily set that as target just so that we have a reference for our velocity. And after we get a little bit further out, you'll have it hold there. All right, and then time to sneak this in there. Set that as a target. 
Okay, no, that's uh, definitely enough backwards motion. Now, let's make sure our roll is proper. And we have connection. All right, now the stage has to come off. It has. I was a little bit worried, to be honest. Oh, did I forget to... I forgot to put a little bit of fuel in, I think. I should have put a little bit of fuel in so that it could clear itself, but it's basically dead in the water now. Okay, well... That being the case, um, our propulsion unit's gonna have to do a little dance. I guess it's a good thing that we delivered all the fuel we could to the thing, but... And certainly we wouldn't have had enough to deorbit the Sajita upper stage, not from this orbit. Okay, we are in line and head towards it. Let's check the docking port orientation. Seems fine, but I don't have force roll. We should have force roll, so let's... It's, a, it's 180 probably. And that's a good dock. All right. So here's what I'm thinking going forward. I think we should just leave the lander at Mars. There's no reason to bring it back and forth. So we could uh, have the tug get it to an escape trajectory, get some other uh, capture module on it, uh, or at least something that can allow it to make minor adjustments to its uh, trajectory on the way, and then have it stay at Mars. Uh, we don't need to keep bringing it back. We found out that the Kerbals need more habitat space, and I think the best thing to do is to dock that extra habitat space on this side. So we'll have another a habitat module here to counterbalance the quest airlock, because the quest airlock and the supplies are more or less a constant presence on the transfer vessel. We should have a more constant presence uh, counterbalancing it on the opposite side. So that's a thought. Technically, we don't need the huge solar arrays, but they look cool, so we'll keep them for now. Um, we just docked the nuclear, uh, the nuclear reactors, so that can supply the power for the ion engines. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep those for now. We do still want the long um, truss in order to generate potentially artificial gravity. And now that we have some reaction wheels, maybe we can do that a little bit better. Let's find out. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, not the best turning rate. I don't think the reaction wheels alone will be enough to... I mean, eventually we could start a artificial gravity maneuver going, but it's going to take a while with just the reaction wheels, so probably we'll still need the RCS for that. Okay, well... Next thing to do is to fuel up the the tug, or whatever you want to call it, the nervous stage, and uh, then we'll separate it off, have it uh, take the lander, so the lander will go off with it. Then we'll dock a new HAB module, and after that refuel everything. And then we'll basically have this ready to go for another transfer to Mars. We don't have as much shielding on this though. So, we'll see about that. Really, the only part that doesn't have full shielding is this B330. So, maybe we should replace that, I don't know. We'll think about that. But, yeah, and then this will be ready to go for the next Mars transfer window. And it'll send crew over to Mars. Hopefully, we'll send some other stuff with it. Uh, but on different launches, not on it. I think we should just make this these transfer vehicles habitat space and have Mars orbit rendezvous for all the pieces. Uh, okay, so anyway, with that, and let's try and get the most epic view we can. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.